Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Travel Tech. So a no-nonsense comparison between the 70mai S500 and the DDPi Mola E3. So the two most popular and most recently launched mirror dash cams. This is the ultimate comparison which you need to watch in order to decide which one of these is the correct one for you. So the Mola E3 comes at a price of 999, that's about 10,000 rupees and the 70mai S500 comes at a price of about 17 to 18,000 rupees. This comparison video is going to clear all your doubts. You're watching Travel Tech, let's get started. All right, so here are the two dash cams and can you really make out which one is which? Like which is the 70 minus 500 or which is the Mola E3? Well, I'll just clear your doubt. This is the 70 minus S500. So let's take a look at the back. So as we are seeing on the screen right now, the 70 my S500 comes with these two big rubber straps and the strap holders at one end. You have the camera lens on the other end, which also comes with a extendable arm. The camera itself is rotatable. So as you can see, you can rotate it about 360 degrees, but with a limited range. Let's keep this here and take a look at the Mola E3. So here's the Mola E3, a similar kind of a design, rubber hooks and rubber straps. The rubber straps do seem comparatively thinner compared to the S500 rubber straps. You have a similar positioning and the alignment of lens, but in this case, the movement of the lens is not as smooth as given in the S500. You have to put in some effort to move the lens about. This too gets a extendable arm, just like the S500. So even when extended and not extended, both mirror cameras are pretty much of the same size. So this is the rubber strap from the Mola E3 and this is the rubber strap from the 70mi S500. So on the left is the Mola E3, so you have this type C port, power port, you have this rear camera port, micro SD card and the GPS slot which is I think is a dummy slot. In case of the S500 you have this micro USB port for the power port, it doesn't get a type C port, you have the micro SD card and a rear camera slot. At the bottom you have a similar kind of an arrangement. You have this long and slim button for the Mola E3 and a broad circular button for the S500. You have dual mics in the E3 whereas there is only one single mic here. A similar placement of speakers can also be seen. So let's move on and take a look at the video quality comparison of both the cameras and see which one turns out to be the better one. So here's the first sample which I want to show you of the comparison between the S500 and the Mola E3. So on top you see the S500 sample and on the bottom you have the Mola E3. So in this particular instance you can make out that the car in front, the Maruti Omni, it has the complete glare of my headlights falling on its number plate. So at a broader distance you might not be able to see a drastic difference between this but what happens if I zoom in on the number plate. This is the result. The S500 clearly outclasses the Mola E3 because of the Star Wars 2 sensor. Yes, as you can see, the Mola E3 gives a complete whitewashed look because it doesn't have the latest Sony Star Wars 2 sensor. So as pointed out in many of my previous videos, the Star Wars 2 sensor works flawlessly well under low light conditions and especially in regards to reading number plates under the glare of headlights, there is nothing that can match up with the Star Wars 2. So the S500 coupled with its Star Wars 2 working as expected, you are able to make out the entire number plate without any issues, where in the Mola E3, it's pretty much difficult or should I say it's not possible to read the number plate under the direct glare of my headlights. But here's a small twist to the story. So in this particular snapshot which I'm showing you from the comparison, the headlight glare is not actually falling on the number plate directly, it's more or less hitting the rear bumper of the Swift Desire. So this means the number plate by itself is not exposed by the glare and what happens in this condition. So as you can see the Mola E3 is now giving a slightly better number plate readability. I shouldn't be using the word better, I think I should use the word more contrasty. So the S500 too you can read the number plate but compared to the Mola E3 it looks a bit overexposed. The Mola E3 giving you a high contrast darker look of the number plate. Now do remember this is an instance when the headlights of my car are not falling directly on the number plate and the number plate is not exposed with any sort of a direct illumination. 
moving on to the daytime sample so here is again a snapshot during daytime on top is s500 on the bottom the mola e3 so i'll show you the number plate read of the swift desire on the right side on the far edge of the screen and if we zoom in to take a look more or less a similar read but what we saw just now in the night sample whereas the s500 gives up a more brighter and a less contrasty look but which among these two is the one which you prefer comes down to your own choice moving on to the video quality comparison between these two cameras the 70 ms 500 on top provides a 1944p resolution at 30 frames per second about 24000 kbps of bitrate and a 174 mb per minute of file size the mola i3 on the bottom gives off a 1440p resolution at only 25 frames per second about 12000 kbps bitrate and 90 mb per minute of file size so you can clearly make out that in terms of bitrate and in terms of file size the mola i3 is more or less half of what the s500 gives out so talking about the video quality the s500 gives off a more warmer tone to the footage and slightly brighter footage whereas the mola i3 has a cooler tone and a more contrasty look moving on to the night footage again a similar kind of an experience with a warmer footage from the s500 and a cool tone from the e3 you might see some slight wobbling in the s500 and that's because i had not mounted the s500 properly because this was a very difficult mounting position to mount both the mirror dash cameras in the same car so that's why you might see some sort of a wobbliness but the overall video quality footage and the readability are pretty much good in both cameras and there's nothing much to complain about it so now that you've seen the video quality comparison let's move on and take a look at the comparison between the user interface from both the cameras and see which one suits your needs the best so here's the mola i3 dash cam currently streaming from the rear camera and if i just touch on the display you get all these pop-up menus you get this menu on the left on the right and the bottom so on the left you have this up and down drag menu wherein if you can slide the bar the camera will focus on the area where you are dragging the bar so if you need to see the top view you can drag it to the top if you want to see the bottom view you can drag it to the bottom at the middle it stays at the middle in a similar way you can increase or decrease the brightness of the display using this particular bar at the right side so all the way down for night specifically so all the way up for daytime then you have the album option and the front camera option so there's an interesting way to swap between cameras if you just swipe on the screen from the right to the left it switches to the front camera if you swipe from the left to the right it switches to the rear camera interestingly i haven't found a way to see both the camera views at the same time as i could see in the 70 my s500 you can either see any one thing so swiping from the left again it shows you the album section wherein you can see the video playback the emergency file recorded and the snapshot file if we head into the video playback as you can see it gives you a long list of thumbnail views of all the videos that have been recorded you can select any video and you can play that so as you're seeing on the screen right now it is currently playing one of the videos which i recorded during daytime so you can easily view any of the recorded videos based on your convenience you can take a look at all of these videos at your own convenience so let's head back so you then have the emergency file which it records usually during any collision or any abnormal movement of the car it records emergency videos and you can take a look at that directly on the screen itself the main home screen you have four different options at the bottom the settings button the album section the snapshot button and the mic enable disable button also on top you have the wi-fi logo and the mic logo so this shows you the status of the mic and status of the wi-fi hotspot if you head into the main settings you have this gray menu with all yellow round colored button icons present unlike the 70 my one where it has a larger square icons so first option you have the wireless lan option you can enable the, off the wi-fi so as you just heard you also get a turn voice notification the turn off the wi-fi also the notification is a bit slow <laughs> as you just heard i had clicked three times and the voice notification came up three times i think there's probably a way to turn it off then you have the mic option so if i click on that audio recording on so there you go the voice notification came in audio recording off and if you turn off the mic you get a specific voice notification and the volume setting you can select it as high medium or completely turn it off well i'll just completely turn it off because i can't keep hearing those notifications then you have the brightness option low medium or high 
then you have the screen on time then you can set the screen for either to be on only for 30 seconds you can set it to be on for 60 seconds or you can set it to be on at 180 seconds or you can completely turn it on then you have the collision sensitivity low mid low medium mid high and high same as what we saw in the app then you have the reverse camera flip option so if you click on that it takes you to the reverse camera view which is a good thing otherwise you wouldn't know what's happening on the reverse camera image if you click on the flip image left right the image flips to the left right and you can also flip it up and down just in case if you have installed the reverse camera in a upside down manner then you have the rear view adjust if we click on that you can drag the screen up and down that's all but you cannot drag or move about the guidelines these guidelines are pretty much fixed and you have to manage with that you can only take the view up and down you can select the stock view which the camera gives once you engage the reverse camera then you have the turn off setting so in this you have the auto shutdown after 15 minutes of parking this is the same what we saw in the app this specifically for those vehicles whose cigarette lighter is powered on even after parking the vehicle so let's head back then you have the storage format option so in this you have the option to delete or format the sd card so that's a good option here then you have the reset option you can reset the system to its factory state then you have the app manual so you have this qr code for uh, downloading the ddpa app on both ios and android then you have the about option wherein it gives all the technical details this is what we just saw in the app so that's it these were the settings option present within the mola e3 and also do note that when you enter settings the dash camera won't be recording and it gives a specific display notification saying that it is not recording and as soon as i hit on the back button and move to the camera view it gives the recording option right here so if i head into the settings and if i set the screen time for 30 seconds so let's just see what happens after 30 seconds well the display has completely turned off as we expected at the mark of 30 seconds and if i touch the screen back again it turns back on so this was the overview of the entire touch screen options for the dd Mola e3 so here's the s500 from 70 my currently mounted in my honda wrv and this is what you're going to see especially when you're taking a look at it during night time so currently i'm showing this in a split screen view but there are various other options which you can try to get the perfect look which is very much suitable for your requirement so let's start up with showing you all the controls on this touch screen mirror dash cam so as soon as you click on the screen you get these settings bar at the bottom so first of all let's jump in into the settings menu right here I must say the menu is pretty good to look at it's very easy to understand and anybody who is even using this for the first time can easily understand and monitor the settings so as soon as i click on the settings button you have this video settings option right here and if i click on that the first option is the video recording duration if we head into these settings you get the recording duration time from a minimum of one minute up to two minutes and a maximum of three minutes so currently i've selected it as one minute then you have the 70 my logo option which you can enable or disable then you have the refresh rate of the screen currently selected as ntsc 60 hertz if we click on that you also get a pal 50 hertz the ntsc 60 hertz which is currently selected and the jpn 55 hertz so let's head into the 60 hertz setting so these three are the only options which you get within the video settings so the point to note is that you don't get any option to change the resolution or there is no option to turn on or turn off the hdr so these are the only three settings which you get under the video setting option and you can see here is the back button and the home button so i just clicked on the back one if we head into the parking security option then you have the collision detection triggers video recording under parking sensitivity you can enable this so currently it is saying no parking surveillance cable detected please enable parking surveillance after connecting the cable since i have currently not connected a hardware kit this option is not getting enabled then you can alter the sensitivity of the collision sensor from a medium to high and to low you also have the response strategy wherein you can select the response instantly after the engine is turned off 
or response 5 minutes after the engine is turned off. So these two options are also present within the parking security option. Then you have the time lapse recording again for which I need to install a hardware kit to show you the settings within that. So let's head back and the next option which you get under the main settings is the smart travel option. Now within this you have the option of enabling or disabling the emergency video. Now emergency video is recorded based on the collision sensor and you can set the sensitivity of the collision sensor using this option collision detection sensitivity. If you click on that you get three options high medium and low currently I've selected as medium then you have the voice control option which you can enable or disable so let's head back following that you have the sound settings option if you head into the sound settings you can turn on or turn off the prompt tone from the dash cam you can turn it off entirely or turn it on then you can set the speaker volume to be high level middle or low level based on your requirement then you have the touch screen prompt tone so this is also a cool feature i think some of you may like it and if i just enable it so you heard that water bubble sound so you get this every time you touch the screen you can enable that or you can disable it if you don't like it much then you have the audio recording option which is basically turning on the mic or turn it off if you don't like it that's it these are the settings within the sound settings sub menu following that you have the system settings option now within this you have the screen standby mode in the screen standby mode you get three options the screen to stay on always or you can set it to go into a screen saver mode or you can set it to turn off after a set duration of time following that you have the automatic brightness adjustment means the display will adjust the brightness automatically if you enable that if you disable it you can adjust the brightness manually then you have the auto off with no displacement so this will turn off the dash camera once it detects that there is no displacement or there is no movement of the car you can set it to turn off after 10 minutes after 20 minutes or do not turn off automatically you can set that as well then you have the wi-fi hotspot settings wherein you can enable the wi-fi hotspot and we also have the option to turn on the wi-fi hotspot every time the dash camera starts up then you have the system time option then you have the date format option as ymd or mdy or dmy so currently we use ddmmyy so that has been selected then you have the option of changing the language of the dash cam there are some lot of options also present here within this so if any of these languages suit you you can select that so currently it is selected in english then the last option within the system settings is the mirror mode so in the mirror mode you can go ahead and select the applicable for the left rudder car or applicable for the right rudder car so currently it is selected as right if we select it as left the back and the home button moves to the left side which becomes a bit difficult to handle if you are sitting on the right side of the car or if someone on the passenger side wants to handle the back and the home button they can do that but if the driver wants to control it in india since the driver seat is on the right side let's click on the right side so this becomes more reachable and easy to handle so those were the options within the system settings let's swipe further and see what's the next option you have the reset device option if you click on that you have the option to format the memory card and to restore the dash camera to its factory settings let's head back then you have the system update option so in this you have to use the app to detect any upgrade package and then download and push the upgrade package to the dash cam so a straight up option right here without any confusion for anybody then you have the option to download the app using the qr code then lastly you have the about device button if we click on that it gives the name of the dash cam that is 70 my rear view mirror s500 current version is 1.0.14 and the time published is 8th of august 2023 so that's it these were the options within the settings menu so let's head back to the main screen following this you have the option of the album section so if you click on the album you have all videos section emergency videos recorded parking surveillance videos time lapse recorded videos and photos so this is basically an album and you can access everything within this for example if i click on the all video button 
you can see the preview on the left side and you can see all the videos which have been recorded and currently stored in the SD card being shown on the right side. So let's scroll down a bit and show you one video. So just selected one random video and it starts playing on the left side for you to take a look at. You can also do multiple selection using this button right here on top. If you click on this, you can select multiple videos and then you can delete them. As you can see, there is a delete button right here on top. So this also is an option present within this. If you head into photo, so these are the two photos which I just took randomly. So you can monitor your photos and take a look at these photos as well. So a very easy to access and approachable album section is present within this dash cam. Let's head back and here the third option in the sub menu here you can see is the mic on and off button. If you click on that audio recording is on, you get a notification. If you click on it back again, audio recording is off. The next important option which I want to show you is the switch camera button. So currently as you can see as I told you previously on the left you can see the front camera on the right you can see the rear camera. If I click on the switch camera button it interchanges the rear camera goes to the left and the front camera goes to the right. So you can interchange it back again and this keeps happening as many times as you click on this button. But interestingly this doesn't apply only to the split screen view. This applies to every other view as well and that's where we are headed next. So this option right here as you're seeing right now is a full screen option and if I click on that single channel display mode. So currently you're seeing only the rear view camera being displayed on the dash cam. So if you want to take a look at the front camera you just click on the switch camera button. So the front camera video feed is being streamed on the dash cams entire display. Again, if you click on the switch camera button, the rear camera comes back. Interestingly, there's another option which is picture in picture. So as you can see here is a big square and within that you can see a small dark square. So if we click on that, this is the PIP display which is picture in picture mode. So the rear camera display is taking up the entire screen and the front camera is being shown in a small thumbnail view. And if you click on the switch camera button in this instance, it interchanges back, the rear camera goes in a small view and the front camera goes in a large view. I'm clicking back on the switch camera button, it interchanges back again. So in the view button, as you can see, there is a distinctive line in the middle. This is a split screen view back again. So if you click on the split screen view, it will take you back to the original video feed which you were watching up until now. The front video on the left and the rear video on the right. So I think these all options are very convenient and very useful to most users because we don't have to depend on what the dash camera is showing to us. We can change it the way we want the dash cam to show the video feed for us. The next option is a take photo option. So this is also a very useful option because in the instance you want to take a snapshot of something, you just have to click the screen and click on this camera button you have a photo saved from both front and the rear dash cam. That's a super cool thing. The next option and probably an even important option is the emergency recording video. Even in this option, it's a simple tap required and as soon as you click on it, you get this notification chime and you get this status bar here which shows you the progress of the emergency video being recorded. I think it records up to 10 or 15 seconds and the emergency video will get stored in a separate folder which won't get deleted via loop recording. So in case of any incident or accident or if you see something important in front of the dash cam or even in the rear of the car, you can click on that emergency video button and it will save a separate video file just for you. Let's show you an even interesting option. Let's head into the reverse camera view. So as you can see currently the reverse camera is being shown on the entire display but what if you are not satisfied with the current view of the rear camera and you want to take a look slightly below or slightly above of what is being shown on the display you can easily do that you just need to swipe your finger up or swipe your finger down as you can see it beautifully moves the image to the required angle and once you reach the required angle you just need to lift the finger and the camera stays at that particular angle. Also one more important point, 
you can increase and decrease the brightness of the display simply by sliding right or sliding on the left. As I just saw, the display brightness increased and decreased based on the kind of touch gesture which I just did. So this you can do at any point of time. You can increase and decrease the brightness based on your requirement or you can try to see up or try to see down within the field of view of the camera by swiping up and down within the display. I think this is a very convenient and a very cool feature that this camera is providing. So the next important thing which I need to show you is that as soon as I put the car in the reverse gear, you get this pop-up sound and the camera turns into a reverse gear mode. So as you can see, you get this guiding lines as well being shown on the display. And you see an interesting option right here. What's this? Let's check it out. If I click on that, you get this square with three arrows pointed at three different directions, which means you can enlarge or make the guiding line smaller based on your requirement. You can even increase its height or decrease it based on how convenient or how comfortable they are for you. So based on the width of the road, based on the length of the road, you can achieve this very easily. And as soon as you reach a point which is comfortable and sufficient for you, click on the tick button right here and the guiding lines set in that place. Now again, as I showed you just now, if you're not satisfied with the view of the reverse camera, you can simply swipe up and down. So as you can see, I'm taking the view up. I can take the view to the middle or I can completely come down based on my requirement. This is also a very super cool feature. If I remove the reverse gear from the car, as soon as I put the neutral, it gave a notification pop-up sound and the display turned back to its original default display. There's one thing which I didn't show you, the voice control. Let's just say, take photo. So as you just saw, based on my voice, it just took a snapshot which means I don't even have to touch the screen to get things done. There are various other voice control commands as well, along with the one which I just showed you. You can take a look at that once you buy the camera for yourself. So which one of these two cameras is worth investing your money in? Well, what stands out in favor of the 70mm S500 at a price of about 17 to 18,000 rupees is clearly the Starvis 2 advantage. It is the next gen latest sensor which the Mola E3 lacks and of course it has a really good low light performance in terms of reading number plate under the glare of headlights. Also what works in the favor of S500 is the various display modes on the screen. You get a split screen view, you get a single camera view, you get a picture in picture view. On top of it you can control all of this via voice control as well. Last but not the least, the user interface of the 7900 is so simple, clean and easy to understand and easy to use. I mean, it's really wonderful to have such a cool interface on your mirror dash cam screen. So all these factors work in favor of the S500 and make the camera really worth the extra seven to 8,000 bucks you need to invest in getting it. But what works in favor of the Mola E3? Of course, the price point. It comes under the price bracket of 10,000, which is more approachable, more reachable to most of the consumers. It gives you most value for money in terms of giving you a broad display under 10,000 rupees. You get a reverse camera assist and all the belts and features of a mirror dash cam. Of course, it provides a quad HD resolution and also gives you a decent video quality and a good number plate readability, especially when the number plates are not under the glare of headlights. So no matter which of these two dash cams you are inclined to buy, you will find the link to both of them in the description below. So just head down, click on the description and purchase the dash cam, which you feel is the more suitable choice for you. Also, if you have any doubts or queries, you can always write that down in the comments and I'll try to clear them as soon as possible. And this video has took a lot of effort and planning to bring in front of you. So if you do recognize that effort, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified each time I upload a new video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.